Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm jumping back on in on my PC save. And we're firing up the Orbital update. Yes, so hopefully I can make use of all the trade mechanics. And all the other stuff that's going to help me in earning units early game from the Guild Envoys. So yeah, let's jump on in and let's give this a go, people. Okay. Right, I'll see you inside, I'll see you inside again. game, people. It's loaded. I guess. Nice. Yeah. Bitsy gaming. And I'm into game inside one of these lovely new stations. And this is on my PC save. Pretty darn freaking epic. Okay, right. Speak to Corvax Cartographer. Okay, well, there's one right there. Ha 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 ha! We should go and speak unto him. This looks freaking epic. I would have ended off inside of the station last episode, and it didn't look like this. Heck no, it didn't. Okay, right, let's head on over then. Hello there, Cartographer. I love your new shop. Look at it! Are you happy with your upgrade, my friend? I'm fairly sure he is. Not that I... Well, there we go. Cartographer entity request planetary data. Collect from outposts. Exchange for use of existing charts. Query Corvax history. Here we go. Once I sense a null's presence. If the Corvax feels it too, they do not show it. They begin to speak their words clear and bright. Processed by my unseen companion. The arrival of Traveller is anticipated, but you are not ready yet. We must know that you are the one we seek. There is an anomaly, a glitch. It is guarded by the holes through which the Convergence cannot see. Move through this space. Retrieve that which cannot be retrieved. Okay, you've just given me a cryptic freaking mission there, my friend. But we've also got a new marker that's appeared on my top elliptical thing at the top of my screen there. So we will head on off. And we will follow this elliptical sort of symbol. I guess we shall. Hold on, before we do that though, I just want to see what my guild rank is and see if I can up it and see if I can get any bargains. Hello there. Hello. Because this is all new. We've got a new guild envoy. We've got new trade opportunities. Okay, right. Well, I can't get any of those for free right now. But can I... Oh, I can give some salvage data. All right, there you go. There you go. I've given you a load of my salvage data. Oh, look, he's got a cargo bulkhead right there. I could do with that. Oh, you can donate them. You can't actually redeem those. There's not much there, really, that I would redeem normally. Oh, Starship launch fuel. I can have that, can I? For free. I can have it for free. Okay. Well, that helped me out massively. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was worth doing, wasn't it? All right, cool. All right, well, let's head on out then. I will be paying the Guild Envoys a little bit more attention, I think, people. This has helped me quite a fair bit. Launch Thruster Fuel this early game. Heck yeah. Brilliant. I'm already seeing their usefulness as a new player. In a roundabout way. I mean, obviously, I'm not a new player, but I am on the PC save. Cool. Well, I'm pretty glad I fired this little playlist up then, to be fair. I'm already seeing the benefits of the update. It's going to help me do a more balanced and thorough review when I do hit up a review of this update. See, I've held out on doing it. I mean, although I've done quite a lot of the content, I haven't yet sent all my frigates out on missions, which I need to do. Hold on, before we go down there, I'm going to send out my frigates on missions if I can. Is this too close to the planet's atmosphere? It is now, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just warp this way just a teeny bit. I know I'm getting sidetracked, but I want to test out some of this new stuff. Now, I have got a load of pirate frigates that I can send out. The only thing I don't got, I don't think, is frigate launch fuel right now. So I might have to just chuck it into creative mode. Just so I can get a little bit of launch fuel for my frigates. And we'll send them out. And then I'll put it straight back into normal mode, I promise. Okay, there's another jumble out. Papacha! I leap from my ship like a Grizzle. Yes, yeah, let's go over here. We don't have Grizzles in England. I've never really seen a Grizzle in real life. Ah, no, it's just a side bit of nugget of information, but there we are. It is what it is. Right, so we're going to difficulty. Oh, it's already in creative. Shush, tell no one. Right, okay, let's head on up here. Yep, and let's go through this little teleporter. Zoom! It's like magic, but technology. And we head on over to see this guy. Hello there, my friend. 
And another thing with sending out frigates inside of creative mode is that actual burn time for the actual mission is halved. It's like super low. So here we go. You'll see what I mean in a second. Look at the time limits on these. You know, we're talking minutes, not hours. But hopefully they're going to call, call me to their aid. I'm going to send that one out because it's only a one star. And at the moment, all of my... um. Oh, look, they're all waiting debrief. All right, well, let's go debrief them quickly. I haven't got a massive fleet. So if we do encounter any other sort of um, pirate interactions, I need to sort of sort those out. All right, let's go debrief these guys then. Lovely, lovely. Debrief. Because the, this has been enhanced as well inside of the orbital update. Apparently now, you know, like you can get called back to your uh, settlement every now and again. Um, if there's been a dispute or if there's any sort of complications or if there's a raid. It's a similar sort of thing now for all of your frigates. If they encounter something that they can't deal with themselves, you may have to warp on over and help them and assist them in battle, which I think is awesome. I think this is one of the improvement ideas that I actually suggested when they introduced frigates. And I was like, it's a shame you can't go along on missions with them. Well, now, technically, you're not going on the mission at the start, but if they encounter a problem, they can call you to their aid. I think that's far more believable and um, inclusive. And it makes it feel like you have a kinship with your fleet. I think that's a freaking great idea. And some of this stuff that you get, you can actually donate to that uh, guild envoy as well. I've seen them asking for some of this stuff. So, you know, running the frigate missions now in tandem with your playthrough is probably a good way of not only just earning a shed load of units, but it's an ambient way. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. Of even maybe improving your guild ranking and all sorts of other stuff. Anyway, let's uh, let's send this guy out and that guy on that one. Because only a one star. I've matched the one star. Maybe I'll put one more in there, actually, just to tip it over. I put the B class in amongst the one star. There we go. And that's now... Oh, actually, that's that's too much. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. It can just go. It can go as it is. Um, let's take that one out and put that one in. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Go, go, go. Right. And we'll do... with the, We do the free star. And in the free star one, I'll put the B class and the other one of those. You know what? I'll just throw that one in anyway. Just just, just because I can. Go, diddly, go. Sweet. Now that I've put them on their mission, if I then go into difficulty and swap that back to normal, chicka boom, and done. Hopefully, we'll get distress signals. If, if they encounter something that they can't deal with, hopefully I get hit on up. That'd be cool. I'm, I'm quite up for it because I just want to test that, that sort of aspect of the game. Now, another new aspect of the game is inside of our ships now... Where is it? La, 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 la. If you have yourself the economy scanner installed, you can actually search for surges in trade patterns. So I haven't tried this yet, but I will in a bit. We'll go down to the marker. I'll do this marker and then we'll look for a trade surge. I have no idea what to expect from it. Let's head on over. Let's fly on down. Coolio. Now I'm on my way, fragmented memory. Aha. Hammering through these clouds. Oh, that cloud looks quite swirly, doesn't it? Okay. Whoa, nanny. Hold on to your horses. What the fudge? Um, there's nowhere to land. Like, seriously, like nowhere. I'm not seeing an island. I am not seeing nothing. This is a big oceanous planet. Hold on. Is that an island that I just spied? No, nope, it's not. That is, though. Can I land on that? No, It look, it's moving. That's not an island. It's like some sort of growth that's just sticking up from the ocean's surface. All right, well, we're going to try and land on it anyway. No, we can't land on that. There's another one there. I think this is the nearest freaking island all the way over here. That's a swim and a half, people. Oh, for fudge's sake. Seriously? Am I on the right mission? This hasn't put me on Tales of the Deep or something stupid, has it? Uncover the path. No, this this is where I've got to go, apparently. Oh, some biscuits. I don't like freaking swimming. Okay, right. Let's use the uh, the old scanner. 
It's a thousand U's that way. Oh my days. Look, straight out into nowhere. A thousand U's of swimming. Arson biscuits. This is gonna take me a little while, people. Alright, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll see you when I get there. Okay, chums, I'm supposedly in pretty close proximity. Somewhere just over here. Um well where? Exactly. Am I on it or something? Ancient structure. Oh, I am. It's right below me. Here it is, right here. Okay, right. I've got runic lens selected. I have. Cool. Right. Let's swim away a little bit. Turn it around. We've got to watch out for this eyeball creature. As soon as it gazes at me, I'm going to zap it. The freaking eye. Take that! We'll have his eyeball. We're going to have that. Yeah, we'll have that. Thank you! Before it thieves spawns. Let's head on in before I drown. All right, there is a kelp plant here. We'd have that too. Lovely. Let's interact with this. Cool access memory. This connection is not permitted. It's merely the state of a new equation. On Corvax Prime, entities who passed on into the Corvax Echoes left their shell for their descendants. Well, this is very interesting. This ties into the whole Echoes update and the arrival of the Autophages. It would seem that the Corvax that passed away on Corvax Prime left their shells for their descendants being the Echoes. I mean, the Autophages look nothing like the Corvax of now, but who's to say that the Corvax of yesteryear didn't look like the Autophages of then? That's how I interpret that little bit of information. So, has been the way of the Corvax an endless Carpus cycle that knows no end. So then, modern Corvax, I'd say, is a vast upgrade to the old autophage ones. This way will continue. It will continue for as long as our lights still shine. Shine, shine a light. Wherever you may go, let your light shine brightly. Okay, sorry about that, people. The terminal's messages is delivered. It shorts out. Its strange existence no longer tolerated by our reality. A small unit, aglow with ethereal light, is left at my feet. A divergence cube! Nice! Heck yes, I have a divergence cube. We now sort of swim all the way back to my ship, which will take me a month for freaking Sundays. Right, okay, I will see you back at my ship. Where is my ship marker? Fudge, I've just swam around in a giant 360. Okay, right. Yeah, I know, Exo. This is not where I wanted to go for swimming lessons. Trust me, my little friend. This is freaking toxic, it's not nice, and it's miles away from my freaking shifty ship. All right, people, I'll see you when I get there. All right, chums, well, I'm nearly back at my old ship. I wonder if I can use my jetpack to reach it. Now, something else that they've done inside of this orbital patch, if they've made it so this starborn runner actually hovers in place a little bit like sentinel ships now i haven't tried this out yet and didn't quite make it back to the ship there we're gonna try it now people so here we go let's just take off and let's see if we can make it hover in place so if i slow it right down is it still creeping forwards no uh, that actually works it now hovers in place just like the sentinel ships Freaking great for harvesting materials and all sorts of stuff. Freaking nice. Like it. That's kind of what I expected it to do. Awesome! Brilliant, eh? So that's another thing tested inside of this update. It's all the little things that add up to a big thing. Anyway, let's head back to the Corvax Cartographer inside of one of these new stations and i am really liking these new stations i have done a stations tour video where i go and look at three geg stations three corvax and three vikey just to see how much they vary and see if i can spot any patterns and you know what it's a great little episode if you haven't seen it uh, i'll put it in the link somewhere in this video it just appeared in the top right corner but look at this thing isn't that cool so basically in that video i was like Let's look through the keyhole. Who lives in a station like this? Yeah, and then I do a little observation from the outside. I play through the trusses, see if it's got engines in the rear. And then we fly on in. 
and we take a look around. See what the guild envoy's got, see what the mission agent has. There's a great little episode. There we go. That should be live now. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, land here then. Let's go back to see the cartographer people in the view of us. Oh, that's brilliant. Eh? Ready up. Let's jump on out. Papa Cha! You know what? I'm just looking at the levels of the old volume. The PC levels seem to be a bit high in here. There you go. I'll just drop the levels a bit on the old PC so the sound effects aren't so high. Let's uh, run on over then. Let's go and give this cartographer back what he's after. Hello there, chap. Nice one. Hello. I love that gold ring on his head. Very cool. Anyway, there you go. There's a divergence cube. Let's just see what he says. The Corvat looks up, swiftly scans me, then re reveals their catalogue of maps and charts. There you are. You, it's real. But I beg, do not expose me further. Your claim is proved, traveller. I begin my request, explaining my search for knowledge. My need to know about the Atlas, the Sentinels, and the history of the universe. But as I speak, something goes wrong with the life form. They do not speak. Do not reply. As per closer, nanite clusters emerge, as I peer closer, nanite clusters emerge through their face mask and spilling out into their outstretched hands. That sounds horrendous. The life form grabs at me, and in the moment of contact, nanite clusters touch my hand. They invade me, tunneling inside my body, and through my exosuit, through my mind, through my soul. And my days. Even as I stand in space, my mind travels across the cosmos. I see life as the Korvax see it. A vast tapestry of wonder, of memory shared between countless beings and times. That sounds actually okay. All right, fine. I stand on the Korvax homeworld as Gex ships fill the skies. Holy fudge. I see the moment the first Korvax was melted down for their rare materials. The Gek first spawn were frickin' evil. The Gek that we see now are smaller variants of Gek. They are the lower spawn. The actual first spawn used to eat the Gek that we see now. The first spawn are long forgotten and long gone, thank fudge. But even in the depths of the subjugation, there was hope. A bargain, a prayer to a greater being, the Atlas. The Corvax viewed the Atlas as they might become in time an intelligence beyond, beyond comprehension, beyond judgment. And, you know, and we all know that the Corvax became the Echoes and the Void Mother. So that consciousness is now almost as great as the Atlas, or that's the way the lore is going. The vision ends, and I convulse as the nanite clusters spill through my helmet. The Corvax watches me impassively. Okay. Ask about the Atlas's bargain, I guess. Look at the nanite clusters. Look at them. The stuff of sentinels. Do you not see the truth of what we have said? Do you not see the proof of God? I look down at the nanite clusters, puzzled. They look nothing like the shells of the sentinel drones. They are just currency traded between species to create technology and weapons, aren't they? They shift, undulating and changing their shape at every thought. They bubble and rise, sparking in and out of existence. I look at them, and it's the strangest of things. The nanite clusters look back. I'm sure of it. They watch me as I watch them. The nanite clusters are alive! There are 16 of them. They, they need me. They crave me. I have only one choice. Take them. I take the nanite clusters. As I do, the Corvax reaches out to me once more. This time there is no vision, no miracle, just a handful of words. Existence is beautiful if you let it be. Life is not a question. There does not need to be an answer. Wow, this is freaking deep, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Dundley and done. No wonder I love the law so much, people. It's moving. It's eerie. It's creepy. It's everything you need law to be, even though it is a little bit loose and vague at times. Right. Anyway, I'm just going to leg it up these stairs. I'm going to go see this guild envoy to see if I've got anything else that they might need. Hello there, guild envoy. I want to talk to you. Yes, I do. People have become a lot harder to interact with since the update, though. I must say that, people. It's a bit finicky, a bit twitchy. 
No, no. On my jaunts around all the different um, stations in my previous video that I mentioned earlier on, they asked for the treasure chests and all sorts. I can't remember which race it was. I think it might be the Gek. Right, anyway. Or was it the Viking? It was one of them. Just not the Corvax. Right, oh. Well, we're heading out then. Did we get given a new marker or anything? I should have really read that, shouldn't I? Okay, we've got to share our revelations inside of the space anomaly. Now, I haven't been hit on up by my frigates or anything like that as yet. I imagine that's not going to happen until they get halfway through or nearing the end of their journey. But anyway, let's fly on in and let's go and see Mr. Darth Punk, Nada himself. And let's uh, share with him our revelations. As that is what we're being asked to do. Thank you! Meow. Okay. Yep, yep. Mm, let me out of my shippity ship. Chicka pa chicka boom boom. Have I got the rocket power I need to make it up onto the mezzanine? Yes, I do. Easy peasy, lemon de squeezy. Boom. Hello there, Nada, the man with the bestest cape in the whole freaking universe. I mean, look at that thing. It's beautiful. I don't know why you've got the atlas on it, though, mate, if you don't like the atlas. You keep calling him the liar. You've got a picture of the liar on your freaking back the whole time, my friend. Why? Gek transgressions. Clear for all to see, but Gek only follow rules. All entities conform to their patterns. Gek cannot be blamed. It is their pattern. It is determined. Is that slightly racist there? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, anyway, let's ask about Gek. Come on. Polo Friend is unlike other Gek. Polo Friend turns their back on greed and war. But does Polo Friend make a choice? Do other Gek make a choice? Perhaps Polo Friend is not good. Only anomalous. I suppose a leopard never changes its spots is the way that you could interpret that that Nada just said and not read into it too much or try to equate it to our world. Okay, go on. Nada cannot know, as so part Nada does not think on it. Polo friend is Polo friend, and this is sufficient. Polo and Nada, you tend to talk in cryptic freaking circles. Just get to the point. Alright. Okay, thank you very much for the nanites. Is, is that it? Uh, have, I, have I finished this now? Patterns in time. Speak to a Gek cartographer. Okay, we've got that to do, have we? Alright, people. Well, um... Let's go do that then. Uh, or shall I leave that for next episode? I, I'm not too sure how long I've been going for. You know what? I'll just jump in my ship, out of my ship, create a save, and we'll go speak to the Gek next episode. At least then I can stick a lovely Corvax on this thumbnail and say that it's Corvax lore or Corvax history or ancient history. Learn of Corvax Prime. I don't know. I'll work something out for my thumbnail, people in the view of us. Don't you worry not about that. Heck no. I'll find something. I've got something something around here yeah that was, that was my squeaky rubber duck but yeah i don't know people i'll be with you next episode though and we'll go speak to the gek because the gek lore is probably the most intriguing with everything that you've probably learnt in this one you'll probably understand why lore wise i like the gek lore the most and then the Corvax and Viking, but it's because the Gek and the Corvax are so entwined that I like their lore so much. I do like the Viking lore when it comes to Null and Huck, Herc, and the way that they're up against each other, because one believes in the actual Atlas as a god, and the other one sees it as a false entity, and it's quite violent, their history and lore. Anyway, people, until next time, you've been awesome. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Oh, dang it. Look, my Patreon banner's broken. But don't you worry, all the names will come out at the end of the video. And I've updated all the names at the end of the video. We've had a couple of new Patreons. Thank you, new Patreons. And we've had a new few YouTube members. Welcome aboard, all those that back my channel. And thank you to those that have taken up the higher tier on Patreon to back my PC build. Now, the PC build, I'm hoping that Like No Fire comes to all platforms. But as you know, right now on Steam, it only shows Steam. So I'm wondering whether Light No Fire might come to the PC before it comes to other platforms. And I need a decent PC to play it on if that is the case. So it's a little bit of a race against time. Not that we know when Light No Fire is coming out. If you can jump up to that higher tier, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you do, I am 3D printing these to send to those that jump on over to that higher tier. So we've got a couple of Atlas cards there. 
one has got like the Starborn Runner grafted onto it. Look at, me, look at that, isn't that wonderful? And there is a little stand to put those cards on as well. There we go. And this is the sort of bundle that I'm taking to the meetup. This is going in the raffle prize with the two Atlas cards. And this is actually for the quiz winners. The quiz winners are going to get one of these. They're really, really quite cool. So yeah, a little bundle like that for anybody that backs the actual PC build. Anyway, people inside the Viewerverse, and it's, it's people that back it for a good like eight months. You can't just jump in within the last month of me building my PC and go, oh, I want that. Uh, no, you've got to back it for about eight months at that sort of rate, which granted is quite a lot of money when you, you break it down. But at the same time, you do get some lovely bits in return and you get to properly invest in the channel and its direction because hopefully i'm also going to be doing maybe star citizen squadron 42 and i also want to re-jump back into nightingale after nightingale gets past all of its sort of like little mini release gripes and things like that and hopefully gets a more balanced approach to the grind so yeah there is that there's a couple of other games that i've got my eye on like under a rock that looks really good and Towers of Azkabar. And I don't know whether those are coming to all platforms at launch, or whether they're gonna to come to PC first. A lot of games these days come to PC first. And I think that's mainly because at the moment, whenever you look at games that have come to console and then been ported to PC, it's not always great for the PC port, is it? But the games that are made for PC and then get ported to console seem to be far more stable. So I think that could be a way that a lot of games developers move in, especially since Xbox and PlayStation have been fighting over exclusives and having these little mini console wars. PC sort of puts you on a sort of, you get a lot more indie titles on PC that then might go over to the consoles too. But yeah, I kind of feel that PC gaming might be, I hate to say it, perhaps even the future of gaming. I mean, it's moved from the arcade to the console PC was pretty much lagging behind. I mean, at the time, when I picked up an Amiga 1200, the reason I got an Amiga 1200 over a PC was because it done side-scrolling so much better. And it actually had 256,000 colours, where PC games were like Snake or Worm. PC games were cack. But then, slowly but surely, PC games took over the Amiga games. It's like Doom and Quake came out on the PC, and I had to emulate the PC to play Doom and Quake. Which I did. I actually grafted a Voodoo 2 card into my Amiga. <laughs> yeah, fun times! Yeah, so I used to play Doom and Quake on an emulated PC through my Amiga 1200. Oh, I loved my Amiga 1200. If you had an Amiga 1200, hit a like, stick a comment in saying, yes, yeah, fellow Amiga person here. Yeah, freaking great. I used to make games in Blitz and Amos. Anyway, I'm going off on a complete side tangent when all I wanted to say was, if you want to back my PC build, that'd be thoroughly awesome. And basically what I'm going to use is my alien laptop just for all the capturing, creating the thumbnails and doing all the video editing. And the actual PC is going to be strictly for playing games. And I'm going to plug that in to my capture card and capture directly from it. And hopefully I'm not going to have frame drops or, or lip sync issues when I've got my webcam on. Hence why I'm doing these playthroughs with no webcam on. But I'm trying to do all the emotes and stuff like I used to and interact more. As it, like I'm stuck in the game in a roundabout way. Anyway people, I'm signing off now. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.